Candid, captivating, compelling. Welcome to Cannabis Confidential with Dr. Dina. Listen in as Dr. Dina, medical marijuana pioneer and inspiration for the award-winning TV series, Weeds, shares never-before-heard stories, chats with cannabis insiders and celebrity friends, and provides invaluable perspective and insight into one of the fastest-growing industries in the world. CannabisRadio.com proudly presents Cannabis Confidential with your host, Dr. Dina. Welcome to Cannabis Confidential. I'm your hostess with the mostest when it comes to the cannabis business. I'm Dr. Dina and welcome to Cannabis Confidential Disjointed Style. That's right. We are going to take you in a journey for the next few weeks with everything amazing about the show Disjointed that I worked on. I was so blessed to be the cannabis consultant for the show. And today we bring on the very first guest that is associated with the show because we finally have permission from Netflix. So this is super awesome. Please welcome Liz Ho, who played Jenny, the bud tender on Disjointed. Welcome, Liz. Thank you. It's so good to be first because I'm going to set the bar real low for everyone. Um, So I'm excited about that. Uh, It could only get better from this point forward. All right. I'm going to tell Dougie Baldwin now that he's got a make up for this, huh? Because I, I, I worry about Dougie. Dougie's going to start start talking about very strange things on, on cannabis radio. But I just wanted everyone to understand a little bit more about why I think, why I wanted you to be first. Because it, it, in the background of Disjointed, I was brought on uh, probably about, gosh, we started filming uh Late, late October, early November. Early November, we believe we started filming. And I had started working on the show back in April. And I had been hearing about you know casting and, and what kind of people were... And it was so exciting for me to find out who was going to be playing these characters that I had already fell in love with in the writing. And then we finally put the cast together and there was a different Jenny. And it was, it was overnight, right before we started taping... All of a sudden, there was a new Jenny, and here comes Liz coming on set after everybody had spent like two weeks bonding and hanging out, and here comes the new girl, and everyone was like, in the beginning, like, oh my God, we've all heard about her because she's so amazing, but here she is, and we get to work with her, but you really blew me away because you stepped into Disjointed last, but you grasped it like you were first. And so I wanted you to be first here because to me, you blew me away by jumping in really right before taping and, and making it like you were there from the beginning and creating Jenny and you knew her. And so thank you, Liz. Oh my God, Dina, that was so kind of you. Um, I have to say the set was a little crazy, but you were so kind and I remember being the new kid on the block, getting lunch and like looking around where I sit. And I'll always remember Dougie Baldwin being like, you can sit here. And I was like, okay. And it was just gangbusters past that point because everyone was just so kind. And we all wanted to do good work, you know. Um, in terms of like feeling like I knew Jenny, I mean, that really comes down to DJ's writing and like, he just, he wrote something really fun and it was fun to jump in on it and nerve wracking. Am I allowed to swear on this? Oh, absolutely. Okay. It was nerve wracking as fuck. Um, (laughs) I was having like major panic attacks. Uh, But you know, like it's part of doing the work that we as actors do. You just pretend that you know what you're doing and hopefully no one will call you on your bluff. Um, well, you so, you fooled us actually, very well. <laughs> you ah, had us all. You all had us fooled. You're like a pro. But you. that must be a I very like was... traumatizing experience to walk on to a show like that. And and I know you've done it before by going on like Two and a Half Men, and you walk on to the show that people have been working together for so long, and it's like almost become this little machine. And then you have to like like jump in, like you're jump playing jump rope, and all of a sudden it's it's this beautiful rhythm, and it's like you are meant to be there. Yeah, it definitely was like double dutch where I'm like, don't hit your face, don't hit your face, don't hit your face. You hit your face, keep on going. <laughs> you can still do this. <laughs> um, you know, and that, you brought up a really good point about like guest stars. Our guest stars killed it this uh, this first season. And uh, it's hard because we are a very tight-knit family on set. 
And um, everyone was really cool and really nice. And I hope that they had a good time on set. I hope we weren't too traumatizing for them. I know I had a great time being on set with them. I had such a fun time. And it was, you never knew who was going to show up next week, which was really exciting. It was like, who who's going to be our friend that we're going to hang out with for a whole week or two or three? We just didn't know. And But was did, were you excited when you got the script, like finding out that you were working on a show about cannabis? Because that's a little uh, different. Is, yes, I was. I was very excited. Um, I, I don't know. Well, okay. My mom was in a production called Hair uh, back in the 60s. She was the national dance captain for it. And it's really funny because when we were growing up, my mom would start off like, I did hair. We didn't do drugs. Don't do drugs. And as we got older, it'd be like, okay, so maybe I was a little bit naked on stage, but like it wasn't a big deal. And then it became like, so we might have smoked a little bit of pot. And, but it's not as like, just don't do it. And then it became like, so, you know, if you want to smoke with me, that's fine. Like, that's and so, so be able to kind of, it felt like a legacy almost, like to be able to continue that kind of idea of revolution. Um, I feel like, especially with um, uh, weed being legalized in California now. Yay! Right? And how um, fun was that, that we literally... Like a revolution. But how cool is it, like, the timing that here we are? Like, when I first started working on the show, it, it was not legal. And everyone was talking about, like, it was going to be on the ballot. And I remember some of the producers, who I won't name, who maybe are, like, a little weary about the plant, who are, like, kind of would look at me like I was a nut job. But all of a sudden, like, right as we were taping, it became legal overnight. And it was all of a sudden, like, oh, yeah, it's it's totally okay now. It's not this horrible thing that we thought – you know, we, we we couldn't touch upon. And so it's, it's sort of interesting how it changed. Like for me, seeing how the, the crew in the beginning was just shy. They were shy around the topic and now they're all embracing it. I think you, you hit it right on the nail, like the head on nail. Head. I'm so bad at these colloquialisms, um, but we should keep that in because look, it makes me human. <laughs> um, <laughs> DJ, our producer will laugh at that because I continually get things just slightly off. Um, and he'll he'll make fun of me for that. Um, our audiences, I felt like, at first were, like, these poor people who were like, we hear Kathy Bates is in something, not expecting cannabis, not expecting, like, us swearing up a storm and having crude sex jokes, to, like, getting younger and younger audiences and mixed audiences where they were, like, rooting. They, people were screaming for Olivia shitballs, like, screaming, was crazy and they didn't even know the show they hadn't seen it before and just the people in the audience I, sw I watched that I'm like oh my god what you guys are gonna do for a shitball oh my god one <sighs> guy I remember do you re I, I think you you had to then suffer this there is the our uh warm-up guy was like let's have a dance off and this one guy was oh, genuinely god. like a male professional dancer and Betsy and I got so excited we ran up to our first AD, whose name is Guy. He's kind of like the dad of the set. And we, like, begged him for a dollar. We're like, Dad, can we have a dollar so we could, you know, tip the nice man who's dancing so well for, like, a shit ball? <laughs> That's so funny. I do remember that. And it was funny because, like, we're all working on, on the floor. And you have the audience there. And the warm-up guy is keeping them occupied. And we often just kind of, like, tune it out. But when we heard that guy, we saw that guy dancing. We didn't even see him. We heard the crowd screaming. And that's usually when we respond. It's like, what the hell's happening? And I remember you and Betsy, like, looking, going, what the hell? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But that's what's cool. We it's like you, so we're, We have a show, too. We have a show for us in the crowd. Yeah, we had, um, what was the college that, there was, like, a university choir. Oh, that sang, right? Choir that sang for us. That was pretty and cool. And they were good. They were amazing. They could have gone sideways real fast. Exactly. But I, I thought it was pretty neat that the people who were like traveling from all over the world and the country or whatever in groups were showing up to watch this taping, had no idea really what they were watching. And by the end, were just dying laughing because they couldn't handle the content. It was like they're from Wisconsin or somewhere and, and we're talking about a weed shop and they just couldn't. Like just watching people's faces, it was pretty fun. I have to, I have to admit. But I want to talk to you more about that. We got to run to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with Liz Ho, Jenny from Disjointed. Cannabis Confidential with Dr. Dina will continue after a word from our most confident sponsors. 
At Alternative Vibes, our core values of quality, loyalty, respect, and honesty guides us in our mission to help families find peace and harmony through our products and services. Whether you are looking for a more natural way of living, shopping essential oils, topicals, and edibles, or searching for a path towards achieving your goals, we are your choice. Learn more about our complete line of natural products and solutions at AlternativeVibes.com. Bringing quality of living to life. AlternativeVibes.com. Introducing Blue Moon CBD, straight from the bluegrass of Kentucky. With our special nano emulsion process, you'll not only get the best CBD available, you'll get more of it. Not all CBD is the same. It's your body. It's your choice. Get relief from inflammation, anxiety, and stress. Go to www.bluemoonhemp.com and use code HEMP420 for a 20% discount on your order. Balance your body. Balance your life. Make it Blue Moon CBD. The smoke is rising, and the next crop of podcasts devoted to cannabis providers and enthusiasts are ready to be harvested. Welcome to the Cannabis Radio Network, founded by respected rainmakers who have been producing award-winning podcasts for over a decade. Industry headlines, business updates, medical reports, marketing, and e-commerce education rolled up perfectly for your consumption. Let's grow together. The Cannabis Radio Network. Network. CannabisRadio.com. Look at how people are transforming cannabis from the shadows of the black market into a cash crop that draws in cannabis from Hollywood to Wall Street. Lewis Goldberg and Ann Donahue prove the green rush is real. Wednesdays on demand only on CannabisRadio.com. Dr. Dina is back with more Cannabis Confidential, only on CannabisRadio.com. And we're back. I'm Dr. Dina. You're listening to Cannabis Confidential, and we have Liz Ho from Disjointed. That's right, everybody. Jenny is here to save the day. So, Liz, now that we know what it's like to uh, listen to the crazy audience, what was it like working with Kathy Bates? Because you got to work like one-on-one in scenes with her, and it was pretty epic, I must say. Yeah, uh, like a lot of us, I'm a huge fan of Kathy's, and when you get to work with a legend like her, you you try to be as prepared as you can, and then I realized my first one-on-one scene with her, we were going to be doing um, one of our strain of the days, which was Eve's Bush. Basically, I'm talking about a strain of pot that's supposed to be like a vagina, and I'm doing it with multiple (laughs) award-winning actress, (laughs) Kathy Bates. You know, like, you think, in my mind, I was like, I'm going to have these, like, really deep scenes, and like, oh, my God, like, the comic. And, of course, it's, like, the most insane, crazy, off-the-wall topic. And I I remember being really nervous, but Kathy is unbelievably, like, down-to-earth, kind, smart. Um, She doesn't take... You know, she doesn't take slack. Like, she's just so cool. She's, like, what I want to be when I grow up one day. Um, And so generous as an actor. Um, A great leader of the ship. I mean, it does say a lot. She's number one on the call sheet. So, from the uh, business standpoint, she basically sets the tone of the stage. And she set it for a place of generosity, of love and kindness, and fun. um, And professionalism, you know. I love um, that you said that. Yeah, so first, true. It's so it's true. So true. She really sets the tone. Uh, and I remember just doing Eve Bush and being really nervous. And then she couldn't get her lines right. And I was like, oh my God, award winning Kathy Bates has the same things I do. And then she was like, fuck a duck. Let's oh, when she says fuck a duck, again. it was like, I know. I love it. It's, it's just, she's just so beautiful and human and just a whole person. Uh, you can't help but want to be a better version of yourself for her, but also just be yourself. Be yourself. So back to Kathy. I was so nervous when she first came to set, and the very first day, and you you weren't even there yet, and she walks in, and, and 
the room went from like boisterous laughter to just total silence. She walks into set oh and she God. sits down and everyone's just like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. And uh, be professional. Don't freak out. Uh, she's going to, you know, break your, your ankles with a, a sledgehammer. Um, and she was playing up this misery thing. It was, it was hysterical. She's playing it up and she finally just turns around and she's like, so when are we going to start motherfuckers? And, <laughs> And uh, everyone just like went, oh, okay. Oh, we can relax now around Kathy. She's cool. She's cool. And she just so lovely and so embracing to, to cannabis and always talking about, you know, what I do for a living and different and, and open to di trying different things. Like she wants to actually learn about her character to where she's like, she wasn't afraid to come by the dispensary and buy a couple of vape pens and try it out. And she loves them. And, and, that to me, because for me to be working on a show that's so close to my world, I I could have been there could have been cast uh, actors in, in this in the show that hate weed that I didn't get along with that don't respect what I do, but instead you guys they cast the most wonderful loving people, which just goes to show you you know really what cannabis is like. It gets people just we're, we're on a level playing ground. We all love this plant. And we're all willing to fight for it. And I just want to thank you from my bottom of my heart because I have so many people that have reached out to me personally through Instagram or Twitter or email. So I know they have reached out to you if they've reached out to me. But just thanking me for having a show like this on the air to where they can watch it with their parents and their parents will laugh and start seeing like, okay, they're being ridiculous. They're making fun of the ridiculousness that's associated with weed. And it's not this harmful thing. That's so. Thank you. It's it's one of the best things. I remember there was a tweet of a woman saying that she was watching it with her grandfather. And I was like, that's incredible. Yeah, to that's so use cool. a platform like sitcom. You know, like, it's so... I know sometimes people don't understand that sitcom is sometimes very big, broad comedy. But it's the idea of using that comedy to talk about bigger subjects like cannabis in our society, like uh, medicinal use, like PTSD, um, like talking about uh, using it for healing properties, and using big, broad comedy as that carrier to kind of break down the fear of talking about what the federal government deems as a terrible substance, which still blows my mind. I don't understand it, and um, we could go on and on about that, but yeah, we well, that's it's a whole nother show, but we can definitely go on about it. But uh, <laughs> what I thought was so cool was, you know, everyone tends to kind of uh, express their their anxiety or, or their internal just like, like I get, I'm a very nervous person. And so I'm always looking for something like if you always, if you notice, I always have my phone in my hand, which right now I left it upstairs charging and I'm like, keep looking around. Where is it? Where is it? It's like my blankie or something. Um, I'm always like fidgeting with something and I noticed that you are like my soul sister when it comes to this and you're always creating some kind of amazing arts and crafts project. You're always fidgeting and making like I have right in fact hanging in front of me I have a poof ball that you made for me with really beautiful colors. <laughs> oh, that's my, uh, oh yeah it's hanging from my desk. And uh, you know, I, I just love that about you and I love that there, you relate in your character because I think that a lot of Liz comes out in Jenny, uh, but, but so many dispensary girls, people who work in, as bud tenders, they can relate to your character so much because they haven't told their parents what they do for a living. And maybe they've been lying to their parents about where they are. And, you know, I didn't tell my parents when I first got into this industry what I was doing. And a lot of that is where Jenny kind of gets that from. Um, but even, you know, Tula, who works for me, Tula just recently told her parents um, they thought she was just managing a, a like a bodega for for years. Oh, until her, God bless her. Right? Until her sister was sick with cancer. And she's like, hey, um, my bodega sells pot and it has CBD oil and I want to give this to my sister. And her sister's cancer free. And bodega. now the family's, it's a pot bodega. Exactly. So she was being honest. <laughs> she just wasn't being specific. But it's so, she's cancer-free, you know, right? Her sister's cancer-free. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. The whole yeah, family's so on it Yeah, so I live with depression. I live with depression, anxiety, and an eating disorder. I've lived with them since 
oh gosh, early teens. And I definitely, as an Asian American, I'm like third or fourth generation, depending which side of the family you look at. There is still a lot of stigma talking, talking about mental health. And so one of the things that I would do is internalize a lot of that and it would come out as depression or anxiety. And it took a lot of years of therapy and uh, figuring out ways to take care of myself and self-care and cope around anxious situations. One of those things is I do craft. I do keep my hands busy. I do needlepoint. I make cards. I make proof balls. But I have to thank you, Dr. Dina, because the only time I had really smoked pot before coming on the show was at parties, right? And I never really looked into using cannabis medicinally until I really took a good look at Jenny and this uh, show and having you as a resource and a friend. Um, I remember my back. I had two degenerated discs. And I didn't know that at the time, but you saw I was in so much pain and my anxiety was so like palpable. You were so kind to help me and Tula too, to find a treatment plan using CBD, using different um, strains to help me manage not only the pain, but also help me with uh, social anxiety to a point where it's not like I'm totally faded out, but the voices are just a little bit calmer and right. I'm, I can be more present in situations. I feel the same way. It's not like all of a sudden I'm so like, oh, there goes Liz. Like she zoned out again. It's just, it's just, it's medicine to be completely honest. It is medicine. Yeah. And I mean, I have a girlfriend who literally like gets paralyzed in fear over the smallest things ever. And it's just like her fight or flight, like mechanism in her brain that just like shuts off. But if she smokes a little bit, she can, she copes. She's totally fine. She can function. But it's really that, you know, it's everyone uses it for a different reason, but it's not necessarily, you're right, to go to a party and get high, um, which is so funny because how Look, it's flipped so quickly into all of a sudden now that's okay because it's for adult use and now it's okay to do that. Right. But, but yet more and more people are coming and look, in. That not is to get really high. fun. Right. Oh, like, sure. Getting high apart, that's fun. Like, it's fun. But, like, there's also this whole other side, which is beautiful as well. I agree. I agree. And we will definitely get into more of that. So we're going to take a break in a second, but I want to learn more about your history in acting and what kind of led you into this world. And and then we have to talk about DJ because we've never talked about DJ. And this is kind of going to be fun. I you guys are all going to learn about DJ David Jabberbaum, who is the, the showrunner and co-creator of Disjointed. Everyone thinks it's a it's just a Chuck Lorre show, but it's actually a David Jabberbaum show. A little help from Chuck. So we will be right back to discuss more. Don't go away. Cannabis Confidential with Dr. Dina will continue after a word from our most confident sponsors. Oh, let the marijuana llama tell you something now. Bought a game for your phone, gonna make you say, wow! The game's about the game of growing cannabis for cash. Grow the seed, sell the bud, put the savings in the stash. Little by little, your empire grows large. Put the big celebrities inside your entourage. You can choose to play with Snoop or me or Cheech and Chong. Cypress Hill, Willie Nelson, Wiz Khalifa with a bong. The name of the game is him pink, that's the point. Download and play while you life yourself a joint. The business of cannabis should be no crime. Hemp Inc. is even hot proved by the man who run high times. Oh yeah, get it on Android and I and iOS today. Marijuana Llama out. Got to tend to me on crap you know. Money don't make itself. Hemp Inc. What do master growers, dispensary owners, extraction artists, and infusion chefs all have in common? They'll all be in Denver, Colorado at NCIA Seed the Sales Show, February 7th and 8th. Don't miss a chance to learn alongside 3,000 of the cannabis industry's best and brightest in three highly focused tracks about cultivation, infused products and extractions, and business strategies and innovation. Network and shop for all of your business needs across 40,000 square feet of Expo 4. NCIA Seed the Sales Show. SeedTheSalesShow.com. The next generation of vaporizers has arrived. Vuber vaporizers are blazing the way with unparalleled technology for oil, concentrate, or dry flower pens. Providing unsurpassed customer service and expert craftsmanship, Vuber vaporizers use cutting-edge technology, providing a power-packed, smoother vapor with a lifetime guarantee. Experience vaporizing the way it was meant to be. The Vuber way.
dispensing cannabis business knowledge beyond a million square feet of cultivation space. Sean Eubanks hosts Blunt Business, harvested by Strainwise Consulting, Wednesdays on demand, only on CannabisRadio.com. Dr. Dina is back with more Cannabis Confidential, only on CannabisRadio.com. All right, we're back with Liz Ho. Let's talk more disjointed, girl. All right, so now we have, uh, yeah, so we have, uh, we are just, this has just been so much fun, and I want to do more episodes. I'm, I have so many ideas in my mind of where we can take all these different characters, and they're just so fun and so lovable. But the guy that really created all, all of this, named David Jabberbaum, who we all affectionately call DJ, just because he's he's a DJ, right? Yeah. He's kind of a DJ. But uh, he's a character. He's so much fun. And he is all about showing the sides of the cannabis plant. He's won, I believe, 13 Emmys. I think he's told me that a couple times because he's a little bit of a show off. He, yeah, he's mentioned that, like, drop out of <laughs> one or twice. <one's> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so he really, you know, wanted to embrace the different sides of this world and he spent a lot of time with me at the dispensary and going to high times cups and meeting all these different crazy characters in the cannabis world and I think that's really where he got this love for this 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 whole industry that we have um, and of course working with him is just so goofy and fun and I know that everyone in Hollywood is just dying to work on our show because our, our set is just like the coolest set to hang out on but I want to know more about you know what have you done how do you see this this character different from other things that you've done that's a really interesting question because I noticed as an Asian American actress there are like a few routes that people go in terms of like we're going to talk about where you're from or like we're going to talk about your heritage uh, and at first I thought that's what DJ was going to do with Jenny and then he flipped it on its head going from something like we're going to do what the family does with this whole lying thing into okay we're going to come clean we're going to have family be back and we're going to introduce them to a multiracial couple and to the idea of Jenny working in cannabis. Um, I love the idea of Jenny becoming more um, shaman-esque, like Ruth, like really leaning into Ruth's healing um, qualities. I would love to see that. I'd also love to see like her and Carter go through some hard times because I always love couple conflict. Um, we kind of got a little bit of that with Jasmine, his therapy parrot. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but I do love a good love triangle. Like that's when I watch TV. That's what I salivate over. Like for instance, The Bachelor. I know I have terrible taste in television. I can't stop watching it. That's what my I husband, want. My husband's favorite show. Absolutely. Really? I had he, no idea. I'm gonna text him immediately. Oh my god, he's gonna be so excited that he has someone to watch it. In fact, I would be so mad at him. <laughs> this is actually really funny because we've been together for ten years, but we were to. We dated for seven years before we got married. And after dating for a guy for five years, you get a little impatient, right? And we would have to watch yep. the stupid Bachelor, Bachelor, Bachelorette. And I'm like, every couple months, I got to watch some, like, jackass couple get engaged that don't even know each other. And you're sitting next to someone that you love. And he would just laugh. So when we got married, the, the day after we got married, he turned to me. He goes, so we can, we can watch The Bachelor together now? <laughs> Oh, my God. Like, I hope yeah, he proposed no, you with, like, no. Chris Harrison and a pile of roses and, like... I can't watch the show. Dr. I, I can't do it. I can't, <laughs> I can't do it, girl. I can't... The cat fighting over the one guy, I'm like, no, no, no. You know, but Betsy and I was... love watching The Bachelor together. We will oh, no. gossip for hours about the antics of The Bachelor. Well, I can't wait for some antics of maybe The Amazing Race. I like uh, to see a dank happens with that right that's amazing i mean but, what a great idea dj came up with for that oh god he's such a genius he's such a genius don't tell him i said that it might go to his head but uh what i do love about the show besides obviously the content and the cast of the crew who are just such lovely people and really on the top of their game I just love watching things happen overnight. Like you, someone snaps their fingers and things just happen in a way that doesn't happen in normal everyday life. I mean, that's Hollywood for you. Um, so I definitely want to experience more of that. But I love the goofiness of it. I love that we don't take it serious. But 
we show a DEA raid. We show, you know, the craziness, the seriousness, and we have talking plants. I mean, this whole show is crazy, and I love every bit of it, and I want more and more people to watch it. So make sure everyone who's listening, go on to Netflix. Go watch Disjointed again. There's part two is out if you haven't already watched it, and it's amazing. And uh, maybe if we get picked up for more episodes, you guys can uh, hit me up, and maybe I'll get you in the audience for next season because that will be fun because we're – our audience gets pretty rowdy. Oh my god, it's so much fun. Especially when we had like we literally gave away shit balls <laughs> in the <laughs> audience. Like I think we also gave away like a painting that Kathy did in our puff and oh, paint yeah. episode. Yeah. Kathy had yeah. actually painted something and not saying like just come for free stuff. I mean, that's what I would do. But also think- know that every time you watch disjointed, a little pot fairy gets its wings. Oh, in that case, everybody needs to tune in. Everybody do it. Everybody tell your friends. Go watch some Disjointed. Let us know how you love it. Make sure you uh, like this this video and audio. Give us five stars. Show us some love. Spread the love around. Yeah, give us good reviews. Yeah, yeah go on. You know better. Give her That's more. Right. More reviews. That's right. More. We friends. like more. Do it for Liz. Don't do it for me. Do it for Liz Ho. I sh- do it for Lola, Dina's dog, because Lola deserves it. Well, your dogs are pretty damn cute, I must say. I mean, at least I think Cooper and Lola might get along. Coco, Coco might be too high maintenance. So I have two Shih Tzus. They have an Instagram called at Hanging with Mr. Coop. They're way more popular than I will ever be, and they should be. Um, Cooper is definitely more rascally, so uh, Coco just goes to sleep. <laughs> I love it. So everyone go follow them. Where, Liz, where can we follow you online? You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Real Elizabeth Ho. Don't follow that fake girl. Follow the real one, Real Elizabeth Ho. And then we can follow your crafting as well, right? Because those are epic. Yes, I do have another Instagram one. That one's a little more low-key. It's Liz Ho Show if you want to see any of my crafting stuff. So if you're really high or not, and you're like, I want to look at pretty things, come on over to that Instagram. I can get lost in that page for hours, seriously. Just get stoned and watch your crafting. It's amazing. So everyone go check it out. And uh, we're out of time. Unfortunately, I could talk to you all day, but you are awesome, Liz. Thanks for coming by. You guys are listening to Cannabis Confidential on Cannabis Radio. And we'll talk to you next time. Over and out. I'm Dr. Dina. The opinions expressed on this CannabisRadio.com program are those of the guests and hosts and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of CannabisRadio.com. Any rebroadcast or redistribution without proper consent of CannabisRadio.com is prohibited.